What's up, guys? Welcome back to Roleplay Eben. We're going into hour number two here, and for the sake of story, and also the fact that there's really nothing interesting happening in this two-week journey to the city of Theronkar, we're going to skip by it. But everyone is going to receive on the show uh, some information that you catch wind of throughout this two-week journey. So let me message that to everyone. And you can do with this information what you want. Has. Okay. And where is Neil? Okay. So you guys uh, are on the outskirts now. It's been about two weeks uh, since um, you left the city of Pinedale. And you are on the outskirts of Theronkar, this uh, gigantic elven city with uh, a great wall around the entire outskirts of it. Uh, as you're going into town, there's a smaller kind of farm-type area around it. Um, there's people tending to this farm. You see a lot of uh, different um, farm animals, just cattle, things like that. Uh, and then once you get inside the city, it turns into a, a very urban landscape. Um, there's very, very few patches of grass at all inside, uh, and it seems to be a complete nine-day difference from what you saw. And that's where we'll come back into the story, as you guys are entering into the city. Um, I would like to ask Fix if he has a good idea of a starting place for us to start poking around. Um, Fix comes up to you and he goes, well, I do know the leader of this town, uh, Sondros, or Sondosa and me go uh, back quite some time, but it's been many years since I have actually seen him. I could request an audience uh, if you wish to meet him, uh, but other than that, I have no idea where you should... Uh, do you think he would have information regarding these strange cultists? Perhaps. I mean, as the leader of a town, I'm sure he has his ear to the ground or someone uh, in his... Um, service does and, and could perhaps tell you something of, of what has been happening. I'm not sure. case, I think it would be most useful to meet with this man. Right. How say the rest of you? Can we... What if he's already part of the cult, though? Or... Like, I would think that the cult would want to take over the leader of the town first. Good, sir. Were the leader of the town already taken over by the cult, there would be nothing we could do here. Look, uh, and I want to chime in about something, and this is going to seem a little bit weird, actually, but um, I had a really strange dream last night, or maybe it was a vision. I don't know. Uh, and it was um, of a, a nobleman um, being, being uh, involved in some sort of ritual in which the nobleman died. I don't know uh, if that means where we're going, that this has already happened or it's going to happen. It's very hazy. Um, but this came to me last night. Fix looks Whoa. at you with like a, uh, a very shocked face and he goes, well, surely you did see a face? Did you recognize who it was? There are many noblemen in this town. Um, like I said... Uh, I, I mainly was focusing on the on the cultists, and I, I could tell that he was um, dressed very lavishly. I, I it was kind of weird. I, I noticed he had some of Charlemagne's pink socks on, but I didn't I didn't see his face. Uh, so I'm not I'm not sure if I could identify him. But I, I could. I have uh, my ring on. I put my ring on the green one. If I'm if it's not on already. Okay. My Ryan on. Yeah, I have mine on. Yeah. I'll just be like, are you talking about Fix, bro? No, not Fix. My dear friend Cobblepot Toolspark, (laughs) dreams are like women. They come and go throughout your life very easily and very quickly. Hmm, what does that mean? It means that you should pay no specific one much heed unless they stick around over and over. I almost feel like you could interchange woman for anything. Perhaps, but I was speaking more of, you know, they stay with you during the nights, they're private and intimate, and they come and go readily. I'm pretty sure you're gay, dude, so... (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, I don't know what you know about women. I, I am perhaps the most gay person here. I quite enjoy life, and it's quite happy, but believe me, I am a, a friend to the women. Or I should say they are a friend to the women. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I think. Maybe not if you tell them that little thing. Uh, I presume such a manly man as yourself would be exempt from such rules. Or guidelines, as I prefer to call them. Oh, so I'm not like the other woman. You asked to be called sir, you took offense to milady, and you sleep with your horse. <laughs> yes, you are not like any other woman I've ever met in my life. You are extraordinary. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Fixed butt sanity's just like, it's been two long weeks. What do you guys wish I, to do? Could you please set us up uh, with an, an interview with... Commander Saunders, Saundersal Azal. Azal. Uh, yes, I, I will. Sandosa Azal? <laughs> so, here, I'll type it to you. Sondozal? Sondosa? <laughs> Sondosa? Azal. There you go. <laughs> I typed it to you. Ah, there we go. I'll type it to you. Can you type it to all of us? Yeah, sorry. And Fix says, uh, well, he, he, you see him call Bo over and he, he turns to, to Bo's ear and whispers something and Bo nods and you see him ask, uh, exit the caravan and he goes, Bo will uh, go and talk with the, uh, the, the guards of uh, Lord Azal and we'll make sure that a meeting can be arranged. Are there any servants nearby, but kind of not directly beside us? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a couple of, of different servants coming in and, and filling Fix's uh, drink and, and also giving you guys what you want as it's morning. So breakfast was just served, so they're taking plates. All right, I'm going to follow one of the servants inside. And when we're away from Fix, um, I'm going to start making small talk with them, like ask them how their day is going. Okay. Uh, you notice that they're being quite timid and, and quite... Uh, reserved in their responses, and they're not ever really meeting their gaze. They're just simply working. But they, they make some small talk. You get a, a couple of, of bits of information. They say their day is going quite fine, and they're quite happy. All right, so I asked one of them, um, what was your occupation before you came here to work for Fix? Um, when, when you ask this, this servant that, all the other servants leave the room hastily, and she's finally meeting, uh, this is a woman you're talking to, and she's finally meeting your gaze, and she just looks up and she goes, I, I have no memories of, of anything other than this. I, I have simply served Fix for many years. Have you talked to the other servants about what they used to do? She goes, they have all served, and that is all, you know, we, we are quite happy with our life. Don't, please don't ruin that. Please do not ask questions that we do not like to answer. We do not want to answer. She says, right. she stresses the word want. I didn't mean to upset you. And um, I go back to the party. She follows you back in and, and pours some extra coffee in uh, everyone else's cup. Unless one of you is not drinking coffee. I thank her. Fix Definitely says, uh, we, we are now within the, the walls of this, this great city. Um, do you wish to, to wait here? Or should uh, should you... Bo, Bo will probably be a, uh, an hour or two before returning. What, what is it that you guys will do in the meantime? I just, I'm just waiting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a thing I specifically want to do. Okay. You guys wait in, uh, in the caravan and Bo eventually returns and... Uh, it goes up to, to Fix and whispers a couple things in his ear. You can't really make it out. And he goes, perfect. Um, however, there, there is some issue with the with, uh, with Lord Azal. His, his son, Faron, has been killed last night. And he's a little bit reluctant to meet with anyone he has never met prior to. You said oh. killed last night. Yes. What happened? Um... His body simply showed up on the doorsteps of the, the palace here in town. No one knows what's happened. It's only been a couple hours since. Uh, but his throat was slit, and there was really no blood on the doorstep. So 
to me, that sounds like a great place to start, and that sounds like our cult is already at work. Can yeah? Can, can so, you tell yeah. me? Did you see the dead body? He, he uh, Fix looks at Bo and, and nods, uh, giving him permission to speak, and, and Bo says, they, "They will not let me see the body. This this city and its lord are, are very protective of." Uh, for own and, and now the entire city seems to be in mourning as he was quite beloved interesting I'd love to love to get a look at that body <laughs> if possible <laughs> uh, he goes well that that is up to you uh, to wager with uh, with Lord as all as, as we have already spoken with Bo and, and I actually have to leave the town immediately and deal with some other things. Okay. But I shall return at the end of the week. So if there's anything you need, perhaps wait till then. Otherwise, I entrust you to do what you need to. And if anyone asks, you can simply put um, anything that is required for this job uh, on my tab. However, no equipment, no weapons, simply the necessities. Of course. We would never seek to impose upon you. He goes, very well. He goes, Let uh, us go about our job, man. He goes, uh, Lord is all we'll meet uh, with you later this evening, as right now he is in mourning, I do believe. And he, he kind of points towards the, the door. He says, good luck, and uh, again, I shall return later this week. As uh, Vix leaves, I'm going to, well, after he walks away from us, I'm going to go walk up to him. Okay. Well, he, he's, like, pointing to the door, so I would assume the rest of the party goes towards that, and you, you walk up okay. to fix. Yeah. Okay. That happens. All right. Um, fix, I'm really not sure how to say this to you, because I really don't mean any disrespect, but everyone that I've spoken to here, they tell me that they don't remember having a past life before they met you and began working for you. Fix looks at you and he, he kind of smiles and he goes, are they not happy when you spoke to them? Um, I'm not sure if that's very relevant. I mean, someone can be under a spell that forces them to be happy, but they wouldn't, you know, be genuinely happy. He, he, his, uh, delightful face turns to kind of a, a small furrow and he goes clearly you can ask your two friends if these people are under a spell uh, and you will soon find out they are not everyone that serves me is quite happy as happiness is, is the one true thing in life that many seek but have, have most of the time fallen short of, of finding everyone that serves me is quite happy I, I do not see your, your line of questioning or the thought process behind it um, I'm just wondering what's happened to them to make them forget you know, like everything that they knew about themselves before they began working for you. Um, he looks at you and he goes, well, perhaps they never forgot anything. And he goes, I, I must hurry. And I assume your party is waiting outside. Well, do you know how this information was removed from them? I do not believe information was removed from them. Uh, Tell you what, at the end of this week, I will answer your, your questioning. Uh, but for now, I, I, I really must hurry. I am in, I am in some, some haste. Um, all right, I'll leave you be, and I leave. And I catch up with everyone else. As you're walking out, you see one of the, the servant that you spoke to, the, the woman uh, that you followed, and she's... Uh, like on the other side of the store, and you see her staring at you as you walk out, and then you walk outside. And you're joined by the rest of your friends outside. <clears throat> what did Fix say? Um, I don't know. I asked him why everyone that works for him doesn't remember anything about their past lives before having worked for him, and he wouldn't really answer me. What is your fear here? I don't know. It seems kind of wrong. I don't know what he's really doing to these people, but it doesn't seem morally right. 
Well, all I know is that uh, Fix definitely seems to put adventure into our lives and money in our pockets, so I'm okay with him now. I'm yeah. a life for adventure, and I believe that if this Fix man were to turn on us or do something awful to us, we would be able to escape fairly unharmed. But he might be yeah, stripping it... a lot of people of their autonomy, so... Uh, what do you mean? I mean... Is it just a big coincidence that everyone that works for him completely forgets their past selves? No, of course not. We, I mean, we have been quite aware that Fix is pretty uh, dodgy for a while. <laughs> uh, he's lived for hundreds of years. We've known that for a while. But everyone that we've spoken to uh, beforehand has, has said that, you know, if, if like, didn't, didn't your sword tell you that he was a cool dude back then as well? So, I don't know. I wouldn't be too worried about it. Uh, I don't know. I'm just worried from the people I spoke to. They don't really see him as happy as they claim to be. What Now, what do you mean by work for him? Because, I mean, we do jobs for him. Do we count as people that work for him? Well, what if... What if that's what we're becoming? Well, do you remember how you first found Argo? Um, Argo found me, but I remember. Well, how did you meet? Yeah, I think we uh, that's a long story. Yeah, that was my name. Does well, it involve I mean, this Fitch fellow? Fitch no. Fix? Oh. You, uh, you clearly have your memories still, and we've worked for Fix. That's true, but I mean, I don't know how long it takes to kick in. Maybe we have to be unwilling for him to do it to someone. I mean, I kind of agree that we could take... Oh, well, I don't know if we could take Fix, actually. But I, I don't think that we're really in that much danger. But I'm very concerned for everyone else that works for him. We can, uh, we can just, you know, be wary of him. But I think for now, I think it's still good to take jobs from him. Yep, I agree. Honest, honestly, <laughs> I, the thing I'm most interested about is uh, finding out what this nobleman who is slain looks like. If he looks like the guy that I saw in my vision, then perhaps... Uh, perhaps. Are we not here to deal with blood gods? Well, I think they're, they're, they're combined. I think that they're tied, mm. tied together. Well, then let us find this nobleman of yours. Tell me, are you much of an artist? Mm, no. My plan is to to find out if they hold maybe a public funeral, uh, or to it, or to find out the clothes that the the royal people wear around here. Something Do you think like this man that. is dead already, or will be to die soon. Well, uh, I'm trying. They told us of a murder uh, that just happened here. I'm trying to see. I want to see if that murder is the same person that I saw in my vision. Hmm. That sounds well, good to me. Um. Uh, in a city this large, there should be murders just about every day. But if it's noble, there should be uh, there should be a, a special funeral and circumstances around it. Let us head off to the wealthy district of town and see who dresses in black and uh, approach them. I, I, I agree. I think I think what we should do is uh, go to like one of the wealthy bars and see what they do for mm -hmm. noble funerals around here. Okay. If it's like a public one, maybe we can get a glimpse of the body. Free word. All right. So I want to go to uh, a pub in the Noble District, and I assume most of right. you guys want to I'll come too. Riley and Coronado, you guys following? I do. Yep. Okay. Uh, as you guys step out of, of the caravan, it started to, to slowly make its way out of town, and you realize that the space that was once filled by the caravan is quickly filled by everyone else in the town. The cities uh, are, or the city seems to be incredibly. Um, vibrant, filled with a ton of different people. You have a hard time getting through regardless of what street you're going on. Uh, it takes you a little bit over an hour to get from where you guys are to get to a noble pub, uh, but you arrive at the um, the overflowing cup. Excellent. Uh, I'll walk in and order a drink. Uh, he looks at you when, when you ask to, to order a drink and he goes, what type? Surely you can't afford 
what what we normally serve here. Mm. Damn. How how <laughs> much is how much is your uh, the the beer that you normally serve here? He looks over at uh, the bartender, and you realize that when you walk in, there's uh, no one else in in uh, in the bars. It's quite early in the in the morning, and he goes. Typically, it's a gold per pint. Hmm. I I uh, take out two gold, slam it on the counter, and say, mm, "Give me two. And he goes. He, he's he sl- he moves forward and, and grabs it. And he goes. Clearly, you don't want a full man size, so here's half. And he hands you <laughs> half of the pint. Look, how about how about you give me four? Half pints, because that's what I paid for. You handed him four gold or two gold? I gave him two, but they're half pints, right? So <laughs> yeah, He's getting scammed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he looks at you and he goes, well, that'll be two more gold. Well, then just give me the full pints then. He gives you two full pints. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he pours it back. and He doesn't even like pour in your glass. He actually takes... The, the beer that was poured in your glass and pours it into these other p- full pints and hands it to you. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, I, I start drinking. I feel like we started off on the wrong foot here. Clearly, I can't afford your alcohol. And I don't know why you're treating me like somebody who doesn't belong here. But regardless... My good sir, I've told you before, it's the way that you're dressed. Your to- clothes are tattered and blood-stained and filled with holes. You must be presentable when talking with the upper class. When, when you speak up, Coronado, he looks over to you and he goes, My lord, what would you like? I would like a glass of wine, thank you. He goes, very well. He scurries off, opens up a, a bottle and brings back a, a, a bottle of wine. Or sorry, a bottle of wine as well as the, the glass and sits it in front of you. Because that, that'll be 75 silver. Sorry, 70, seven, 7 silver, 5 copper. That's really annoying, so let's just round up to eight silver, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> um, I nod and drink my wine. I'll pay him later. Okay. Unless he demands payment right this moment. No, no, no. He, he totally does not. He knows you're good for it. No, I believe my friend here has some questions for you. Um, Cobblepot. Mm. Yeah. I, I do have some questions. Can you tell me uh, about the the noble person that was killed here recently? He goes, he, he kind of puts his head down. He goes, it was the the commander's son. Uh, so young, it, it, it just happened. So as you see, everyone in this town is quite saddened by this, this death. What would you like to know? Clearly, well, you're not from here if you have not heard of him. It. Uh, we've we we've seen how it's affected the town. We want to pay our respects. Is there going to be a funeral for the public? Uh, I I am not too sure. I I have not heard what the uh, royal decree is on on the subject, but I would assume there will be some sort of public outcry later today. Yes. All right. Um. Maybe you could tell me how the uh, how the noble person dressed usually. He looks at looks at you and and kind of winces and he looks Look, back this, over. Look, this 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 question not. isn't for me, but uh, my friend here he's really into fashion, and uh, he he once dressed uh, a king, King Craig, uh, and he was one of the worst dressed kings. So he wants to know how uh, how Cobblepot. If you're going <laughs> to spread lies and villainy, you might as well get out of this establishment. <laughs> what my friend means to say is that we're looking to give him a gift. Um, this is quite secret, and uh, yeah, we we work for Fix, who's uh, friends with the uh, deceased man's dad, and we want to give him a gift so he can dress his son for the funeral. So we would like to know what his normal taste was like. He he turns to to Ricardo and he he says, "I do not know a Fix, but if he is surely a a friend of the commander, then." I would assume you can simply go and, and request a an audience with him. Um, we I, we will be speaking to Commander Sonsada so Son Sondosa. Yes. Still don't know how to pronounce the hell out of this. Sondosa. Sondosa, yeah. We will be speaking with Commander Sondosa later. We'd 
hoped to keep this a little bit more private, as we were not close with the deceased, but had hoped to be for reasons you might understand. For sure. He, he nods and he goes, well, if, if there is any questions I can answer, then please let me know. However, I will not talk to this, this gnome anymore. <sighs> I, I do understand. He is a little bit abrasive, although he has his uses when it comes to defending people. I, I should not have let my bodyguard speak to you so frankly. My apologies. It was understood. I understood. Um, the, could, do you know the name of the deceased and where we might be able to find his family? We would like to speak to them and give them a gift ahead of before the funeral. Uh, he, he looks at you kind of confused and he goes, well, it, it is Faron Azul, the, the Lord Commander's son. Clearly, you have heard that amongst everyone in the town. Yes. This is most unfortunate. Uh, do you, you have no idea of the manner in which he died? He goes, well, the, the rumor is, and you didn't hear this from me, but uh, he was simply found on the steps of the, the palace this morning, and no one knows why he was there. No one saw who moved him there or, or anything. They, they really don't have any information from what I can gather. Was it, was it murder? Was it natural circumstances a uh, poison a stabbing the royal family has not said uh exactly what occurred to the to the letter but the rumor is that th there was simply no blood around him and his throat was was slit so i would only assume it would be some sort of murder yes yes we've hmm. um hmm. that is more an important more of an important detail than you would imagine Thank you for your time. I look at the others. Like anything else you want to say? Uh, this beer kind of tastes shitty. And I walk. I Argo. Walk <laughs> Argo. Why are you talking to Ricardo's horse right now? <laughs> Cobblepot. <laughs> That's the most confusing thing really I've ever done, cats. That's so. <laughs> I can never remember who's in which campaign now because of that. I get really sad when he says Largo. <laughs> okay. And I say, my heart's really had a silver heart. <laughs> the bartender uh... looks at the group and he's like, well, if there's any other thing, anything you need, let me know. Uh, but I, I have to go tend to the other patrons and he walks off. Please do. Um, I put a gold on the table and walk out. Okay. I'm, uh, I think I'm going to attend this funeral today. Um, so. when is our meeting with the commander? You were told it was just late afternoon. So that you should head to the palace. Yeah. Uh, I presume the funeral would be first, so let us attend the funeral. Uh, can we find directions to the funeral and attend, or? Uh, yeah. Are we dressed to attend a funeral? I have clothing to attend a funeral. I go and change appropriately. I don't I know about the other guys. Now clothing seems to be fit to attend a funeral. I've never gone to a royal funeral. The way I'm imagining it is like everybody stands on the side of the streets and they bring the casket through the streets and you can just wear whatever, but I, I have no idea what the funeral would actually be like. But let's go try and find some information on the funeral. All right. Yeah. I mean, we're looking for. I guess I look for flyers. I don't really know what I'm looking for. I'm <laughs> if, it's a, if it's a big public spectacle, we should be able to ask anybody yeah. on the street. I'm yeah. looking for mourners or like people that look like they'd be headed to a funeral or something like that. Sure. You you walk up to a, a person on the uh, on the uh, the side of the or walking towards what looks to be the palace. It's it's one of the more regal looking buildings that stands above everything else in the city, and uh, the person looks at you and he goes, "Yes, the the." It is open to the public. Anyone, any citizen of the town can attend. It will be probably incredibly crowded, but you can attend just as I can. And he, they walk off. Wait, did we I find see. out where it was? You hear the, the man who's running uh, back turns his head and he goes, Is that the Royal Palace, of course? What time? He, he keeps running off. You don't get a time. 
right. He's running towards go... the palace right now, though. Thank you. I go to the palace right away. Okay, you guys Maybe. make haste. 